evening. Welcome to Adrenaline Radio. This is Fred Blanchard, your host for Adrenaline Motorsports. Um, they have various organizations that relate to land speed racing. And uh, w- one, of course, is uh, uh, there's uh, the SETA, which uh, has uh, 12 clubs related to land speed racing, all from different parts of Southern California. And it, there's quite a few members in each club. I think that the club that uh, I'm a member of is probably one of the largest. It's called the Gear Grinders, and uh, they have uh, different clubs. And when you uh, reach uh, certain goals in land speed racing, such as uh, the 200 mile an hour club, that's that's a big deal. And it was an extreme hard uh, club to get involved or get get into because of the type of vehicle you needed to have in which to do so. And but uh, currently there's quite a few members in that club, and there's a handful in the 300 mile an hour club also. And in order to get in either of those two clubs, you actually have had to set records during the time. And uh, but that made you somewhat of a member. And then there's the unique club of all land speed racing. Again, we're dealing with vehicles with uh, piston driven engines and uh, running on various exotic fuels and enhancements such as superchargers or turbochargers or uh, that type of thing, uh, which is the 400-mile-an-hour club, which to me is the ultimate. I mean, and that's uh, the goal for quite a few. Very few make it, of course, there, but there's a handful. And uh, some of those guys whom I, I've known have made the, the struggles through the years uh, to build such cars on their own, homemade cars I'm talking about. Uh, they've achieved uh, and, and reached levels unbeknown to many, uh, one of which is a gentleman by the name of Al Teague, which uh, I had the good fortune to be acquainted with uh, off and on through the years. Uh, I met him at Bonneville one year, and very amiable type person, willing to share anything and everything, and then Later, I met Al again uh, uh, teaching uh, high-performance engines at Cerritos College. He went to uh, teach that program, and and those are the skills that are lost today. I mean, you're going to find that in today's world, uh, there's very few hands-on kind of people, and Al Teague was one of them, and uh, he uh, was a, a highly skilled machinist. And he was quite a creator of exotic parts and had a lot of, a lot of following based on what he had uh, created for himself. And he started out running a Lakester, and uh, then it evolved into from a Lakester to an actual streamliner, which to me was the ultimate in, in land speed racing. Again, dealing with automotive style engines run on exotic fuels and enhancements like superchargers, as I mentioned early on. And uh, but he's uh, one of my heroes and uh, somebody that I've had dialogue with, and he's shared a lot of good information uh, to people like myself uh, relating to uh, high-speed tires and some of his stories, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, he tells me the story about uh, when he was running on the salt flats where he uh, was up at speed, and I'm referring to uh, 380 miles an hour when I say up to speed. And he says he smelled something kind of funny out there but didn't pay much attention to it. And then when he finished the run, he decelerated and the chutes were out and the whole thing. And uh, as he got to the slower speeds, uh, right right around, uh, right at 200, a little under that, he felt the car drop to the ground a little bit and it started bump, being bumpy and what have you. And, and when he got the car stopped, he had blown out a tire 384 miles an hour. And he says, I should have known better in order to stay with the th- stepping on the throttle. He says, I should have known better. And I thought to myself, this is the kind of men uh, that run at Bonneville Salt Flats. These are the guys that uh, they they believe in what they do. And uh, he, to me, it, it sounds dumb, but I mean, he's, to me, that's, uh, he's, he's a hero of mine anyway. And um, so I was mentioning the 200-mile-an-hour club, and Al is, of course, one of the elite members of the 400-mile-an-hour club, which uh, kind of goes into uh, what is happening here at the uh, 
NHRA Hot Rod Museum here this coming uh, weekend. It, uh, there's there's a gathering there of uh, the 200 mile an hour club, uh, which is uh, uh, pretty much all those who have participated. You're going to find the people that I've just talked about, uh, Al Teague and uh, a variety of other guys, uh, George Poteet and Ron Main and uh, many others, of course, uh, Mike Lefevers, uh, the first full-bodied car to run 300 miles an hour. People of that kind are, are going to be there, which I think is way cool. And and then the manufacturers who pretty much uh, built a lot of the parts uh, that these guys use in order to get to that level. So they're also going to be at this event. And uh, I'm going to go there and uh, rub elbows with the elite as I, uh, you know, in one of these days if we're blessed and uh, we have the good fortune to get up there among them. That's that's our goal, of course. Uh, but we're going to go there. And uh, on display at the Hot Rod Museum, uh, you have there uh, a large display of uh, one of the first people to run hot uh, 400 miles an hour, which is a display of Mickey Thompson's cars and uh, uh, his history, basically, at the Hot Rod Museum. And it's uh, he's got on display the four-engine Challenger Streamliner, which uh, he drove, I think it was to 406 miles an hour, and that was way back when. And uh, that's going to be on display along with uh, several other cars that he has uh, FIA records with. Uh, They're also there on display, I thought was pretty cool. And um, so I'm going to get a chance to have a look at those. As as I remember the name Mickey Thompson, uh, I also have known several people who have... uh, work for Mickey Thompson and uh, uh, one of the fellows uh, who was uh, I think uh, one of the marketing managers there after Mickey kind of went through this drag racing experience uh, and I had another guest on the show here by the name of Steve Montrelli who presented a lot of the stuff he had done with Mickey Thompson Uh, but uh, the gentleman that uh, used to be involved with uh, Mickey Thompson's businesses was a gentleman by the name of Tom Kerno. And uh, he was always uh, there uh, at pretty much uh, the right hand of Mickey Thompson during the year of him being in business. And one of the stories, and I think it's found in uh, Mickey Thompson's book, it it tells about uh, when he needed to meet uh, uh, the payroll for the companies that he ran, and he was running a little short. Uh, He would get a hold of he and Tom would fly up to... uh, Las Vegas, and uh, go into one of the hotel casinos and uh, start gambling, and uh, the good fortune would fall upon him, and he would generate enough money uh, to make uh, that week's payroll. So that was, I thought, a very, very interesting story. And I think it's found in uh, one of the books there that Mickey Thompson, the story of Mickey Thompson, and uh, I thought that was really an interesting story. story that was presented by Tom Kerner, who was right there when all this was taking place. Another one that Tom brings to light was uh, when Mickey wanted to find out the condition of the Great Salt Lake is whether the salt was dry or not, because as you know, we have storms coming through the area there, and it does rain. And and so Mickey said uh, to Tom, why don't we hop in the plane and we'll fly up there and see if the salt is uh, dry enough to run a car on. And he says, well, how are you going to test that? And he says, well, I says, uh, you're going to, when we get down to the Great Salt Lake, I says, we're going to fly down close to the salt bed, and you're going to open the door, and you're going to look at the, the air, aircraft tire and wheel, and we're going to touch the salt. And if it gets all sticky and wet, and when I touch the tire on the ground, he says, uh, we'll tilt the plane a little bit to do that. He says, uh, then uh, we'll know whether this, if it don't, nothing's on the tire, then the salt is dry, and if, if the tire is all salty and everything, we know it's not uh, good enough to race on. And Tom Kernow shook his head and couldn't believe what this guy was telling him. But sure enough, they flew there and uh, and they did this very thing. And uh, sure enough, the salt was all wet. And but Tom had had a, a lifetime experience that only he can talk about. But he was I was fortunate enough to have him tell me that story. I do not know if that story was in the book or not, but. Uh, that's one of the things about Mickey Thompson that uh, he uh, he had shared with uh, uh, Tom had shared with myself, and I thought that was really cool.